Welcome back to The Heat. We're discussing India's new citizenship law. The government argues it's meant to extend citizenship to minorities fleeing persecution from countries including Afghanistan, Bangladesh and Pakistan. But critics say the law discriminates against Indian Muslims. Joining us now from New Delhi is Asad Ashraf. He's a journalist and founder of Karvan India. And here in the studio is Ajit Sahi. He's a political analyst and expert in religious minorities. Welcome to both of you. Asad Ashraf, let me start with you in New Delhi. The Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi is defending the new law. He says it's not discriminatory and it won't render people stateless as some people have feared it would. Uh, let's listen to what the Prime Minister had to say. Since my government came to power in 2014, I would like to tell the 1.3 billion people in India that nowhere has the National Register of Citizens been discussed. There has been no talk of it. Because of the Supreme Court's direction, we had to go through it in the state of Assam. So what is the opposition talking about? Lies are being spread. So, Asad, what do you make of what the Prime Minister had to say there? I think lies are being spread here. Uh, it's, uh, his, own, his own home minister has been uh, saying it and have been quoted so many times on television channels that the uh, CAA cannot, Im NRC cannot be imagined without CAA. So the process of NRC and CAA has to go in hand in hand. What is the Prime NRC? Minister, Could you tell us? Uh, yeah. uh, how, how, did the Prime, how did our Prime Minister... NRC is National Register of Citizenship. So what the government has done as a part of, I mean, uh, as an exercise in, in, as an exercise in Assam and in an Indian state in eastern part of India, is that they have made the National Register of Citizens. Now what they are doing is that they have been asking for a certain set of documents, which are very, very, which is a very, very difficult thing uh, to produce uh, for every Indian. I mean, uh, considering the fact that not every Indian is uh, educated, not every Indian is literate. Not every Indian belong, uh, has a certain privilege to prove his identity. In that case, something like NRC becomes very, very dangerous. Now, this process, what this process has done is that this process has made 19 lakh people, 1.9 million people stateless in Assam. They are now not the citizens of India. Now, what, now, to, now, now since uh, 1.9 lakh, 1.9 million people are not citizens of India, and this government wants to project a pro-Hindutva face. So what they have done is that they have brought in CAA. Now, according to CAA, those Hindus and uh, uh, those Hindus who are included in N who are not included in NRC will be given citizenship right. through CAA, while Muslims will be excluded and they will be made stateless. <clears throat> It is as simple as that. Yeah. Ajit, uh, this new law, uh, critics say, is discriminatory by omission because it excludes Muslims um, and others say that it's a violation of the Indian constitution. You have said that this could break India up. How would it break India up? Well, obviously, I mean, if you have 200 million Muslims who are being discriminated against who are citizens of India, as my friend Asad from New Delhi just said, it is virtually impossible, it will be impossible for millions of people to bring up their documents. I was, you know, for one of the things that has been asked, people have been asked for our birth certificates. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, we don't even know, as Amish was saying earlier, uh, the, e the easy answer is no rules have been notified yet, so we don't know. This is all, these people, they are masters of double speak, and this is how they talk. So I don't have a birth certificate because I was born at home. My parents did not have a birth certificate. How am I going to find the birth certificates of my parents and grandparents when they did not have them? What is happening here? We have to understand the CAA, the Citizenship Amendment Act, has basically been legislated to give uh, citizenship to Hindus who have been found in the end outside of the NRC in the state of Assam. Just to go back to what the Prime Minister was saying, yeah. the Prime Minister is absolutely, it is so unfortunate that Prime Minister of India is actually lying so publicly and so bluntly. He says NRC has never been discussed. I have the data right here with me. The Ministry of Home Affairs, which is the internal ministry of the government of India, right. in its annual report in 2018-19, released less than two years ago, it said, the National Population Register is the first step towards the creation of the National Register of Indian Citizens. All right? The government itself said that and it said in its annual report. Then in Parliament in 2014, then again in 2019, July 25th, July 22nd, July 23rd, then, uh, you know, uh, in 2015, going back in 2015, in 2016, 
ministers of the government of India have repeatedly said, yeah. repeatedly said, one uh, in 2014, the minister said the NPR is the first step towards creation of national register of citizens by verifying the citizenship status of every usual resident. Okay. What basically what is happening here is, in Assam, there was migration, mass migration after the internal disturbances in what was then East Pakistan and then it became Bangladesh. Mm. And millions of people, uh, they, they were displaced, internally displaced, and naturally many of them migrated to what is India, it, the, as the Assamese state of India. And then the Assamese people, the local Assamese populations, they resented that migration from largely Bengali-speaking people. And for 40, 50 years, we have seen that massive um, uh, uh, you know, uh, rejection of the migrants by the native Assamese people. Yeah. And it was in that context that the Indian Supreme Court had ordered an NRC be carried out in Assam to determine who is not an Assamese and therefore is a Bangladeshi illegal immigrant and then the government needs to decide what's to be done with them. But what happened was, and the BJP wrote that, you know, wave, yeah. you know, but what happened was that more Two, three times more non-Muslims were found to be illegal immigrants. The thing is, I can understand the nationality difference, but this is a religious difference. Well, well, because the BJP it. tried to give it a religious color in mm -hmm. Assam. So this is the interesting thing that's happening. Yeah. While the rest of India is protesting against the CAA right. because Muslims fear they will be persecuted in Assam, the local Assamese people don't even want Hindus as part of it. Yeah. Because the CAA says, if you have been found, so the CAA says, anybody who is an illegal alien will All not right. be given citizenship. That's what, I mean, if you read it together with NRC, yeah. that is what it becomes. The CAA says, giving citizenship to people who are persecuted minorities from the neighboring countries, which includes non-Muslims. And the NRC basically yeah. is determined, it, it determines who is a citizen, who is not a citizen. So those who are found to be non-citizens, the government will then clear yeah conveniently under the CAA say, okay, these people are migrants, yeah. we will give them citizenship, minus the Muslims, of course. Yeah. Uh, Asad Ashraf, let me get back to you. Uh, something that is unclear is how this law would be implemented. How would people go about proving that they're Hindu or they're uh, not Muslim, etc.? And another part that is unclear is what would be the fate of those who are found to be illegal immigrants and who are Muslim. Um, there has been talk, some talk, of building detention camps. We heard that from our previous guest as well. What do you know about that? Well, there is uh, just not talks about detention centers. There are established reports. If you go to the state of Assam, there are already several detention camps working over there. Six there are them. other detention camps made in Karnataka, uh, being made in Karnataka and in other parts of India too. I mean, a large uh, amount of budget has been allocated for detention camps. Maharashtra. So these are not just talks. These detention camps are a reality in India and a few, and few thousands of uh, illegal, so-called illegal immigrants are already living in these det detention camps in Assam in very, very poor states. I mean, uh, those who have been to these detention camps tell that uh, their condition is worse than uh, prisoners who are in jail. I mean, prisoners still have the right of being an Indian citizenship, but these people have no rights inside these detention centers and they're just left to die there. So these are not just talks. This is a reality that detention centers are already there in India. This is well documented. This is there in media reports. This is there in several other reports of civil society organizations who have actually gone to do a fact finding. So there are detention centers in India, and, and, and this government has, uh, the ministers of this government have, have time and again said that they are right. committed to build more detention centers across India. I don't un understand the reason of this double speak, that why do, why do at, the, at one point of time just say that there are no detention centers, no talk about it, yeah. and then at the same time allo allocate uh, million, uh, millions and millions of rupees to build these detention centers. Yeah. Mr. Amish was saying that we are, in a, we are a poor country. I mean, uh, if we are a poor country, why do we have to spend so much of money on detention centers? centers and finding out uh, who is an Indian, who is not an Indian, uh, such a futile exercise, spending crores and crores of rupees on this. I yeah. mean, this is just uh, absurd and illogical. Now, this is for the government to decide that how will it find out that who is, uh, how, how does it implement the law. At the face of it, it seems very, very uh, difficult uh, uh, for it to get implemented because of its comp own complexities. But this government, uh, but, the, but the way this government has been heading with, uh, heading towards and the way they have uh, push this law, I'm sure they're going to yeah. push us uh, fur further into chaos. This is only going to lead us into more and more chaos. It's very difficult for someone who, is not, who does not have uh, adequate documents to even prove that if he's a Muslim or if he's a Hindu, right. forget right. about the uh, birth certificate and uh, your date of birth. A lot of people in India do not know about their birthdays. Okay, yeah.
that gets back to my point about how this law will be implemented. Uh, Ajit, India's federal cabinet, they've approved funds for a population survey later this year, a census. Uh, could this information be used against Mus uh, Indian Muslims? Oh, yes, of course. I mean, I just read to you, they're saying it themselves. Yeah. This is, so this is the beginning of a religious, religion-based uh, tabulation of people, and then they will start determining. Has that been done in the past? So census is something that's been carried out for over a century. It yeah. started under the British colonial rule, right. but that was basically an enumeration of the population of the country. In fact, when people like Amish Tripathi say that India's population fell drastically to 3% in 1951, they are actually, that also is doublespeak, that's al also misrepresentation, because in 1947, we do not know what what was the population of Pakistan, of Hindus in Pakistan or of Pakistan in 1947 because there was mass migration in 1946, 47, 48. Right. And the previous census had been carried out in 1941. It is absolutely wrong to compare the figure of 1951 with the figure of 1941 because there was this massive uh, migration, forced migration that, caused, that was caused by the partition of India. Coming back to the present time, what the government is trying to do, it is trying through the NPR, National Population Register, the government is trying to pass NRC because there's such massive, massive resistance to NRC across the country that the government is now trying to pass the NPR and say, oh, but it is not connected with the NRC. Yeah. Well, that is not true because I just read to you, the government itself has said, I, you know, this is a minister and he said, in Parliament on July 8, 2014, in a written reply to a question by Congress MP Rajiv Satav, then Minister of State for Home Kiran Rijiju said, yeah. quote, the scheme of NPR has been reviewed and it has been decided that NPR should be completed and taken to its logical conclusion, yeah. which is the creation of NRIC by verification of citizenship status. The government has said it. Now, Mr. Modi should come out and deny this and say, no, that may have been a position in 2014. Yeah. It is no more that position. That is a lie. Their position. And this is happening, basically, because Mr. Modi is fundamentally from the RSS. RSS is an organization that was founded in 1925, essentially as an organization aimed to rid India of its Christians and Hindus. They want a Hindu-only India. They want what they call a Hindu Rashtra, a Hindu nation. Also, Mr. Amish Tripathi was talking about yeah. the minorities. You know, he was singing paeans as if we are the most pious country yeah. for thousands of years. Well, my question is, why have the Rohingyas, a persecuted minority that has been recognized by the United Nations, by the United States, mm -hmm. by the European Union, why has India not included the, the Rohingyas from Myanmar? In fact, the Indian government has been deporting the Rohingya refugees right. from India. Why are the Hindus from Sri Lanka, Tamil Hindus from Sri Lanka, are not included in this. Uh, I said one other point, you know, many have pointed out that uh, this new law is a violation of India's secular constitution. Is there any recourse to the courts in India? Of course, of course, the matter, I mean, uh, we do have a recourse uh, in Supreme Court, we do have a recourse in judiciary, and a lot of people have approached uh, the judiciary for it to be corrected, uh, citing that it uh, violates the constitution of India. We are hopeful that uh, the judiciary will overturn this law and uh, uh, make it null and void when it uh, passes its order on 22nd of January. Okay, and that's where we have to leave it. Uh, thanks to both of you for being with us. Before we go, we invite you to check out our podcast. You can listen through Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. We cover similar stories from around the world, but get a bit more personal and candid with our guests and correspondents. I'm Arnold Nido in Washington, D.C. Thanks for watching. Life moves pretty fast. Ideas move at the speed of sound. Technology moves at the speed of light. If you don't filter out the noise, you might miss the details. We pay attention to the details because they matter. Showing you a different perspective. See the difference.